So I showed a very boring example of generics in the previous video. We're going to do better in this one. Collections. They are probably the easiest way to explain what generics are about, but they are also the example that everyone talks about when discussing them. It's actually not uncommon for people to think that generics and collections with a type are the same thing, and that's definitely not the case. So let's take a look at two more examples. Here's a function called app. And if you work with a framework like Laravel, it might look familiar. This function takes a class name and it will resolve an instance of that class using the dependency container. Now, you don't need to know how the container works, but what's important is that this function will give you an instance of the class that you request. So basically, it's a generic function, one whose return type will depend on what kind of class name you gave it. And it would be cool if our IDE and other static analyzers also understand that if I give the class name user repository to this function, I expect an instance of user repository to be returned and nothing else. Well, generics allow us to do that. And I guess this is a good time to mention that I've been keeping a secret, kind of. I said that generics don't exist in PHP. Well, that's not entirely true. All static analyzers out there, the tools that read your code without running it, tools like your IDE, they have agreed to use doc block annotations for generics. And granted, it's not the most pretty syntax. And all static analyzers are relying on a simple agreement that this is the syntax, there's no official specification. But nevertheless, it works. Both PHP Storm, Psalm and PHP Stand, those are the three largest static analyzers in the PHP world, they understand this syntax to some degree. IDEs like PHP Storm use it to give the programmer feedback when they are writing code. And tools like Psalm and PHP Stan use it to analyze your code base in bulk and detect potential bugs based on type definitions. So basically we can build this app function in such a way that our tools aren't operating in the dark anymore. Of course, there's no guarantee by PHP itself that the return type will be the correct one, but PHP won't do any runtime type checks for this function. Uh, but if we can trust our static analyzers to be right, there's very little or even no chance of this code breaking when running it. This is the incredible power of static analysis. We can actually be sure that without running our code, most of it will work as intended. All of that thanks to types, including generics. Let's look at an even more complex example. Here we have a class that can query attributes and instantiate them on the fly. Um, if you've worked with attributes before, you know that their reflection API is rather verbose. So I find this kind of helper class very useful. When we use the filter method, we give it an attributes class name and afterwards calling the new instance method, we know that the result will be an instance of our filter class. And again, it would be nice if our IDE understood what we're talking about. And you guessed it, generics allow us to do that. I hope you start to see how powerful simple type information can be. A couple of years ago, I would have needed an IDE plugin for these kinds of insights to work. And now I just need to add some type information. Now, this last example doesn't only rely on generics though. There's another equally important part that's in play. Type inference, uh, the ability of a static analyzer to guess or reliably determine a type without the user specifying it. And that's what's happening with the class string annotation over there. Our IDE is able to recognize the input we give to this function as a class name and infer that type as the generic type. So we're done, right? Generics are available in PHP and all major static analyzers know how to work with them. Well, there's a couple of caveats. First off, there's no official spec of what generics should look like. Right now, every static analyzer could push its own syntax. They happen to have agreed on one for now, but there are little future guarantees. Second, dog blocks are, in my opinion, suboptimal. They feel like a less important part of our code base. And granted, doc block generic annotations only provide static insights and no runtime functionality, but we've seen how powerful static analysis can be even without runtime type checks. 
I think it's unfair to treat type information as doc commons. It doesn't communicate the importance of those types within our code. And that's why we got attributes in PHP 8. All functionality that attributes provide was already possible with doc block annotations, but that just didn't feel good enough. The same goes for generics. And finally, without a proper specification, all three major static analyzers have differences between their generics implementation. PHP Storm being the one most lacking at the moment. Ideally, there would be an official specification coming from PHP's internals, but right now there isn't. And these are the main reasons why I believe that it's worth investing time in a more permanent and sustainable solution. So why doesn't PHP have proper generics yet? Why do we rely on doc blocks without a clear specification? That's next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified when that video arrives. Leave a comment and like, you know what to do. Until next time.